Well, hey there, this is Ian Perry, project supervisor here at Candrone. Today I'm looking at the Green Valley H800 LiDAR sensor. So Green Valley has come quite a ways from its previous generations. We have the S series, we then moved into the V series and into the X series most recently. And now Green Valley has moved into the H series. So today I'm going to emphasize some differences between the H series and this X series mainly because this is the one that I have the most experience working with and which many of our viewers will have currently in their kit. So let's take a look at this new unit from Green Valley. So taking a look at this, the layout is somewhat similar to the X3H. You have the LiDAR sensor itself and in addition to that, a 26 megapixel camera for point cloud coloration and for photogrammetry, if one uses photogrammetry in conjunction with their LiDAR point cloud. We see we have the ports for the GNSS antennas, for an independent power supply, and of course our on-off button. Right away I can feel this unit is coming in at over two kilograms. It's about 2.25 kilograms. That compares with about a 1.2 kilogram weight with the X3 series. And I can see that this comes with a custom Skyport mount for marrying to the Matrice 300 series drone. I can see that they have created something a little different than what we're used to on the Matrice drone. It looks as though this bracket is better suited to carrying the additional kilogram of weight uh, as compared to this predecessor unit. So it looks like the gimbal is dampened with some cable configuration here so that you still have shock absorption from any movement in flight. I am seeing that the outer packaging, the shell is carbon fiber so they are trying to keep weight to a minimum. Let's take a look at some of the specifications of this new sensor. When we think LiDAR, we think vegetation penetration, right? Having enough point returns to see through the canopy to the ground level so that we can classify ground and get products like digital terrain maps. This sensor can provide three discrete returns. And in this configuration, GVI has decided to move into the uh, unlimited waveform returns. What that means is there's no limit to how much data can come out in your final model. Uh, it's not limiting the returns in a force canopy to just four or just seven, but it's going to give you the entirety of the canopy if you penetrate through the leaves and hit various objects in the mid-story all the way down to the forest floor. So potentially having a very, very dense point cloud with as much information as you could possibly use. So it's clear to me that a big difference between the X3H and this H800 is, and if I can do this successfully, I will show you that the field of view is actually different. There's a 100 degree field of view with this H800 and only a 70 degree field of view with the X3H. So 100 degrees means that as you fly along, there is a swath that angles further outward beneath your drone from Nadir. And that's going to pick up more points in your final model. So it will require that you uh, fly with less overlap than you would if you were doing the same flight plan with this and this field of view at 70 degrees with just 35 degrees uh, field of view off nadir. So the question becomes then, well, would those points that are captured farther out from nadir be more prone to distortion? Would those points have some more noise? And it looks like what Green Valley has done with the H800 is they have shrunk the beam footprint on the ground. So it means that when you are flying this sensor, you are going to get a smaller beam footprint on the ground, 
which will give you more precise return information. So it means we can afford to have a greater field of view, cover more of a swath in a single flight pass or in a flight line and get uh, as good a results or still better than the previous generation in the X series. And with that, we're looking at a improved scanning range with this sensor. So this is supposedly good to about a thousand meter range, uh, as opposed to this X series. Now that indicates to me that this could be usable with helicopter, whereas a helicopter couldn't fly uh, low enough and especially slow enough to give this sensor uh, a run. With regard to precision, the X-Series boasts about plus or minus five centimeters at a 70 meter range. Now this sensor on the other hand boasts that same accuracy, plus or minus five centimeters, but from much higher up, uh, 200 meters. And so what that says to me is you can fly higher and therefore take less time to cover an area and get as good results or possibly better than the X3H. The last major key difference I want to touch on between these two sensors is self-adaptive point cloud density with the H800. What that tells me is when this sensor is moving over a landscape, depending on the features in the landscape and depending on the speed that this sensor is traveling on the drone or the helicopter, point density will either uh, increase uh, or it will decrease. So in our next video, we're going to do a field test to compare these two sensors, how they perform and the data output. Be sure you follow us on social media to see the results.